Public libraries as centers of European cities, are they also on the European agenda? This is indeed a provocative question that we will discuss today. Welcome to our online seminar. My name is Hella Klauser. I am in charge of international cooperation at the German Library Association. I'm also a member of the executive committee at the uh, European Library Association, EBLIDA, and I'm pleased to be the moderator of today's discussion. Within the framework of the urban agenda of the EU, the Senate Department for Culture and Europe of the City of Berlin has launched the action Raise Awareness for Public Libraries in Europe. Together with its partners, the European Library Association, EBLIDA, the German Library Association, the Finnish Library Association and the European organization Public Libraries 2030. The, uh, and of course, um, other partners within this action. Um, we will discuss today this important topic. But before we go straight into the discussion, here are a few organizational notes. So, this webinar will be recorded. The second thing is the recording will be sent to you after this online seminar. We ask you to please be active in our discussion by using the chat. Your microphones are muted, so you will not be able to participate with your voice, but all audience can use the chat. We check the chat and we will uh, add your questions into our discussion today. And if we run out of time, we will also answer all your questions after uh, ending our online webinar and we will also send you the answers to all questions. So we hope there will be a very lively discussion with all of you. Uh, the speakers, if you don't see some of the speakers uh, uh, afterwards, they will also turn off their uh, camera. So don't worry, they will be back. And I think this is all what I wanted to say concerning the organizational um, topics. So I think we can write, uh, jump right into our discussion. And perhaps we have the next. Ah, this is too. Here we go. Right. I'm not sure if Gary Whoop has arrived already in our conversation. If not, we will start with Ton. So let's start our exchange on public libraries as centers of European cities with our first two speakers, which is one at the moment. And I welcome Ton van Flimmeren very much. Thank you. Ton is, um, was until last December, the director of the public library in Utrecht in the Netherlands. He is trained as psychologist, teacher, consultant, and worked for the city of Utrecht in different positions. And since 2018, Ton is also the president of EBLIDA, the European Bureau of Libraries, Information, Documentation and Archive Associations and Institutions in Europe. So thanks for joining us today, Ton. As president of EBLIDA, Ton, you are very much engaged in advocacy for libraries especially also for public libraries in Europe. Do you agree to the thesis or rather impression that public libraries, although they are often referred to as lighthouses for education, important institutions for inspiration, citizen engagement and lifelong learning are rather invisible on the European agenda? And if you agree, 
How is EBLIDA supporting libraries here? Tan. Well, thank you, uh, Hella. And uh, before I answer your question, I'd like to thank the partners like the Berlin Senate and uh, Public Libraries 2030 and the German Library Association for this joint webinar we have today, because I think it's an important uh, topic to, uh, to discuss this afternoon. And um, well, getting to your question, um, of course, libraries are all these wonderful, valuable things you just mentioned. Uh, but that is something that we are aware within the library world and often at the level of decision makers in society and politics, uh, there is uh, a different view on libraries. Often politicians say, um, when you talk about libraries, they start talking about the very warm feelings they have from their childhood about libraries, but they don't have an accurate image of this. And, um, well, we can say a lot about it, but uh, one thing is that we should do better in telling them and uh, showing them what libraries uh, do in the communities. And, um, for example, during this COVID period, in some countries, libraries were able to demonstrate how important services they provide in society and in other countries, there was no way they could do that. So that is a basic uh, uh, problem. And you could say that this is also happening at the European level, which is your question. Um, the, the difference maybe is that it is also mutual on, on the European level, because um, Libraries are very much aware on the, on the local level or on the national level, that is where the, their funding comes from. And uh, Europe is less visible and less on the radar of libraries. So you could say that it's a, a, a two-way uh, process of being invisible. And that is what we need to, uh, uh, to break through. And of course, there is uh, a lot of effort needed uh, for advocacy and showing uh, on the European level how important it is that libraries will be included more in policies. The best way to do this is, in my opinion, not only to tell it, but really to act upon it. And that is why EBLIDA is putting, and I hope to tell more about this later, uh, is putting in a lot of effort to raise awareness among European libraries about the policies and the funding possibilities uh, in Europe and supporting libraries who want to be active on that level and also, um, well, to, to help them uh, to make concrete uh, plans for that. So that is in short uh, my answer. Yes, there is a problem there. Um, it's not unique, but it has a specific dimension and uh, I think the best way to, um, to, to work on this is by doing and not only by telling. I'm sure you are right. Um, you talked about the different views of libraries from uh, ourselves, our, us as librarians and the politicians. Do you also think it is a question of language? Are we as librarians using the right language to, to explain uh, our importance, for example, for European society? Or are we too much into our own um, topics and, and don't see kind of the, the political perspective in our work? Mm, I think it's it's well possible, uh, well, at least in my experience with, for example, members of the European Parliament, they are, of course, engaged, uh, for example, in a topic like democracy in Europe. Um, uh, well, there there is all kind of reason to uh, be a bit worried about that and to uh, discuss this on the European level, and it's part of the policy. Um, but at the same time, uh, these uh, members of the European Parliament 
understand that democracy has also its grassroots uh, foundation in communities and in the society. And that is where libraries can uh, demonstrate what they are doing in informing citizens. Uh, well, uh, we can't quote enough the uh, public library manifesto that says that the well-informed citizen is the basis for the democratic society. And that is where libraries have their core business in, in information and organizing the debate in the community. So I think there is, um, although there is, of course, um, sometimes a very abstract high over language in, in European policies, etc., that there is enough, there are enough opportunities to connect these two worlds and say, you work in, in Brussels or wherever you are on, on this uh, topic uh, and we uh, libraries in our communities do it on a different level, but these need to be connected and they all work together in the same direction. Yes, you also talked about the funding. We will get uh, back to that point later on if it is a question or a problem that normally public libraries are funded uh, by their municipalities. So if we have a, a problem here getting to, to the European uh, funding, but this will uh, come up later. Perhaps um, another uh, question which occurs to me um, is the um, the uh, working together as libraries on a European level. You said that also Eblida is supporting libraries on the European level to raise awareness and to act, to show what they all the, the, the projects and things they are doing. Um, can we also support that they um, work closer together as libraries on a European level and not, you know, in each country uh, there are many wonderful things which happen in, in libraries, but it, it, does it show, is it shown as a European whole? Um, well, that's, that's um, a difficult question. I would say there are two aspects that are very important. One is that um, if uh, libraries want to become active on, for example, the Sustainable Development Goals, which in my opinion is a very important uh, topic and it's it's really good that uh, um, IFLA, but uh, the, 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 on the level of Europe um, and EBLIDA, that everyone is paying attention to that. If you want to work on that, you need to have a kind of um, lineup of um, European policies and, and funding opportunities with national policies, policies and local policies. Uh, it's difficult for libraries to work on this in an isolated situation when there is no connection to these different levels. Um, and of course, we all can learn from practices in different countries because although libraries uh, are locally funded and they serve their local community and, and try to deliver the best service that uh, meets the needs of their local community. It always strikes me how much similarity there is in the challenges libraries have across countries. And that is, for example, one of the reasons that EBLIDA uh, has put on uh, uh, the uh, SDG uh, Knowledge uh, inf and Information Center and the Ablida uh, Matrix, uh, Matrix, well, um, to um, to offer to the libraries who want to work on uh, uh, SDGs uh, the opportunity to check their uh, good examples of other libraries in other countries that might inspire them or that can work as an example, and also when they want to apply for European funding, often there is a need to also engage with other countries and with uh, other partners, um, then uh, we can help to make the connection to these partners in different countries. So um, you, you need to have a, a, the lineup of partners 
um, uh, the local library, the library association, the national library, and uh, the government uh, structures on local, national, and European level. But also we need to have this um, transversal connection between countries and between libraries in Europe and the organizations that support them. Wow, this was a good um, a picture of all these different levels and uh, uh, um, relationships we have to keep in mind and uh, to, to, uh, to get us all strengthened together. Okay, thank you very much, Ton. And I welcome very much in our group, Gary Whoop. We are glad that you uh, joined us, Gary. That's, that's great. Welcome. Now, Gary, you are, since 2016, the Permanent Secretary for Europe at the Berlin Senate Department for Culture and Europe. Um, and uh, as the Berlin representative, you have been a member of the European Committee of the Region since 2017. So, Gary, you work at the intersection of Europe and Berlin. So, let us know, why did the Senate Department for Culture and Europe in Berlin focus on public libraries for its action? And why is uh, involvement in the culture and cultural heritage partnership of the urban agenda particularly interesting for the city of Berlin. First, first of all, um, ex excuse me for the delay, but um, I'm not really delayed. Uh, I could hear you. Okay, <laughs> I had, uh, good. The wrong access to, to your conference. Uh, I've got, uh, as, as you know, uh, several um, experiences during the last month uh, with, with different um, uh, software programs, um, but not still not uh, to this one. <laughs> um, we yeah. all understand exactly uh, what <laughs> you're talking about, so please don't worry at all. The details sometimes are the problem. So um, first of all, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to, to be able to say a few words in, in, in this context. And it was interesting to, to hear the, the first um, uh, remarks from, from uh, Ton. Um, I guess uh, what makes the cooperation for for our city um, so so special uh, is the concrete scope um, of of the urban agenda. Uh, we we I, I could say we in, we if invited uh, at uh, two uh, two uh, one decade um, ago I would say, uh, and uh, we uh, uh, see the dimension of policy making in in this context of of the uh, several partnerships within the, the urban agenda. Um, that makes it easier uh, to, to connect uh, to the European Union um, level and uh, to point out and the needs of the, of the European cities uh, in particular. For, for us as Berlin, uh, specifically, it's specifically interesting uh, to get uh, to know the perspective of institutions like EuroCities or Herb Act or different or various other um, European cities uh, with all their different population sizes and uh, starting points. The, the urban agenda for the European Union provides a framework uh, had, uh, that makes it easy uh, to get familiar with those several different or different uh, perspectives. Despite the, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, the partnership uh, never went astray. Uh, which speaks for all of the involved partners and the coordinators of, of the partnership. The structured multi-level approach was very helpful in, in, in this uh, regard. And I see also the representatives of, of uh, very interesting um, uh, institutions, institutions uh, to, to that we, we could uh, uh, find new connections. And, and uh, I'm, I'm re really enjoyed that we uh, have now um, a, a better and stronger network uh, for for these uh, debates on on public libraries for the Senate Department of uh, for Culture and Europe. Um, the future work of the part in the partnership is an excellent uh, opportunity to raise the awareness, and that's the I mean I mean the, the most important point. The awareness um, is an uh, excellent um, the awareness for the 
public libraries and uh, other facilities of the decentralized uh, cultural infrastructure um, of, uh, of cities, such as music schools or youth uh, art schools, municipal museums or galleries uh, on, on that level. Especially in Berlin, libraries are the, cult are the cultural institutions uh, with the greatest reach into the population. And that's uh, the main reason I, I think uh, we, we are focused on, on, this, on this issue. Um, no other cultural in institution reaches uh, into, um, reaches so many and, um, and so diverse, um, diverse visitors um, and contributors Uh, to the social, cultural, and, and, and digital um, participation uh, to a comparable extent as, as uh, li public libraries uh, do. Um, hardly any other institution uh, gets to see the, the hardships and the needs of a city residence day in and day out. Um, that's that's uh, the, the main point I, I want to focus uh, in, in, in this uh, remark uh, to your question. Hardly um, other institution is as empowered as a third place, a so-called third place. That's the, um, the, the focus uh, we have in Berlin or the, the phrase for, for the debate uh, we use uh, to, to explain uh, the, the possibilities uh, public libraries have uh, in, in this uh, uh, framework. Third place is for the public. That's, that's the, uh, the point. It's a, that means um, to ensure educational equity, social inclusion, and digital participation in, in the city. And we, we strongly believe that this outstanding role of public libraries uh, is uh, in, in a society, societal issues should be more recognized and appreciated uh, at the European level. Um, many uh, politicians and institutions or, or citizens know, of course, uh, libraries. But um, but I'm, I mean, it's uh, it's important that we 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 raise this awareness in the society for the libraries, for the possibilities to be there, to see then then uh, the libraries as public places for exchange and uh, to use that. Um, not only to, 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 to lend books or to read uh, there, uh, to be there and uh, to meet other uh, citizens uh, of a city and to get uh, the knowledge. And, and uh, we have the chance uh, to, uh, to, um, to um, achieve and, and participation also uh, of, of all um, social communities uh, in the city. As the city of Berlin, we have dedicated ourselves to, uh, to strengthen the public um, libraries and, and culture in our districts in recent years. The current library development planning in, in Berlin um, in, and the action uh, in the urban agenda can, of course, enrich uh, each other. As, uh, as you uh, know, um, the conference on the future of Europe started a few weeks ago. Um, we as a city of, of Berlin want to get particularly um, uh, to this uh, conference um, and see there an extraordinary opp opportunity, opportunity to make their voices heard uh, for the citizens and to contribute ideas about the kind of Europe um, they would like to live it, and I see public libraries as an important in, um, contribution um, of the cities uh, within uh, this debate. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Gary, for many very important issues you pointed out, like uh, the partnership, so um, that uh, pub especially public libraries uh, have to have many partners uh, within their local surrounding and on, on all the different levels, uh, as well as these very important uh, issues of uh, participation and integrating as many citizens as possible into our democratic structures and discussions. So this is really um, our focus uh, as public libraries, as well as the third place. I think um, many of us um, know this uh, expression that uh, we really want people not only to come to our libraries to check out books as you said but also to 
to exchange uh, and to to get inspiration and uh, good information yeah thank you very much um, this was our our first uh, start into the discussion we go on with a discussion later on within our uh, panel um, so but, but um, before we do this and before we discuss further on um, we want to have some facts and figures so we all agree that public libraries are important service providers for our citizens of Europe, as well as important institutions in the European cities. But we also see that they are not yet as visible on the European political level as we would like them to be. So whether this is a subjective impression we have or provable, we'll now present Ilona Kisch. And let me introduce Ilona to you. Ilona Kisch is the Director of Public Libraries 2030. It's an institution focusing on EU advocacy for public libraries and network building. Ilona has extensive experience in EU advocacy and campaigning of both the operational and political functions of EU institutions. So we are very happy to have you with us today, Ilona. Thanks for joining in. And now we want to know what exactly was your investigation within this framework of action and what did you find out? <laughs> Thank you so much, Hella. It's great to be here. Um, lovely to see some familiar faces. Um, yeah, so before I dive into the the presentation, um, wouldn't it be great if all uh, city representatives could say what Gary just said? I mean, you know, I think I, I think that the Berlin Library Associate Library Organization and the German Library Association has done exactly what Ton was suggesting. You know, in terms of somehow you've understood and seen what libraries, what public libraries are doing and can do. And um, yeah, it's it's not very common to hear that kind of discourse. And it's certainly not very common to have seen such an investment in time and also money to bring this to a broader audience and a broader attention. So I think that we have a really fantastic opportunity here. And um, as you say, you know, libraries are mostly funded at local level, um, and that's where we need to see changes in behaviour, both at the heads of municipalities, heads of local governments, and also within the libraries. Um, and uh, as you say in the introduction, what we're doing in Brussels is looking at how that works at a European level. And um, while you're right, of course, um, many EU policymakers and politicians uh, know their local library. Um, when we started this work seven years ago, uh, we did some informal surveys. I would say that 90% of members of the European Parliament had not been in a library for 20 years and were quite comfortable to say to us, do people still go? Do we still need libraries? Because we have Google. Um, you know, so there was quite a lot of work to do there. Um, and I think that we're making some progress in bringing the vision of the modern library to the EU policymakers. So perception is great. But the report that we were commissioned to produce, which was published online today, um, looked at really technically where the EU is or could be supporting public libraries. And um, I don't um, want to insist too much on this point, but of course, the reason why they don't primarily is because it's not a legal competence or area of the EU. Um, this is a slightly EU jargon word, which goes together with one of our favorite EU words, which is subsidiarity, mm -hmm. which says that if a local member state can do something better at local level than they should. and in the in the time that I've worked in Brussels, which is over twenty years, we saw, you know, a uh, really big growing of engagement in the EU in cultural and educational areas with the Delors Commission twenty years ago, 
and a real withdrawal uh, some years later. So the areas of culture and education, which is where public libraries are traditionally seen, is strongly defended as a local and a national business. Don't mess with us, is what the national member states say. Um, what we would argue is that um, maybe that sometimes ignores the value that public libraries can bring to the broader EU agenda. And one of the conversations that we've had with uh, Daniel and Rainer and the team in Berlin is trying to shift that process from perhaps sometimes getting EU funding by stealth, maybe not, maybe pretending that it's not a library job, but something else, you know, an educational project of this, to arguing and advocating for libraries to be recognised primarily for the work that they're doing. Um, and that's what we've been looking at. Now, what's in policy, what exists and what's possible is very different from how one might advocate for that. So what I'm going to present is a rather technical breakdown of what you can find in the report, which, as I say, is available online freely to everybody. And I'll take you through that very quickly and I'll be here for the rest of the time to take questions. And together um, with Iblida, we've done some ec excellent cooperative work in kind of building up expertise in different complementary areas so that we can support each other in the advocacy work that we do. And I'd say that Iblida is very strong on SDGs and building up a fantastic competence area in the so-called structural funds. Whereas we focused a lot on digital education and digital skills and basic skills, literacy and um, democratic participation. So um, I think that's also an important lesson. Hello, you are something about cooperation in the field. And I think that um, that's something that is extremely important. Um, the library field is not massively well resourced financially. We're not paying for lots of expensive lobbyists. It's absolutely crucial that we work together that we have a coordinated approach and support each other in the ways that we can. So like you, Gary, I'm not super familiar with this platform, so I'm going to have a go at sharing my screen now. Uh, OK. Oh, I, oh, gosh. Do you want to... I have to open something called Any Media Screen Sharing. Is that OK? Doing that. Looks good. You can see it? Yes. Okay. Can you see what you need to see? Yes. Yes, I think we so. see your slides. Okay. So, this was the brief that was given to us. Oh. Sorry. No, it said you have ended this. I think you have to redo it. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't... Uh... Shall I open it for you, Ilona? Do you this mind? I, I've got it open on PowerPoint, but... I open it for you, okay? And you can turn the pages. Okay, super. Sorry, apologies for that. Okay. So this was the brief that came to us from the um, Berlin Senate. And um, we were lucky because um, we in the past had done a comprehensive review maybe five years ago of what was in uh, EU policy. And, you know, things don't change massively. So it was a great opportunity for us to pull out, have a look, reevaluate, assess um, where um, the EU is looking at public libraries. And, you know, as I say, it's quite interesting to think about where does the word libraries occur specifically? Not very much. Um, and where is there a potential for that? Um, so this was what we were asked to do, and this is the structure that we have for the report, which is giving an overall summary, an introduction, a detailed overview, and some analysis. And um, we wanted to be clear that um, this report could form a basis for advocacy, but is is a long, long enough, if not too long, document to put in front of a policymaker. One needs something to be developed from this. Um, I think one of the things that we were quite aware of when we were writing this report, and that's something to always think about, is that libraries are, as you said, Gary, absolutely embedded in society. And for me, there's very few areas that public libraries don't touch. And so it's really kind of a choice about where we would want 
to focus on. And this is a very short list. It could could go a lot further. Um, there are many, many societal challenges that are facing uh, European citizens at the moment. And because of the nature of public libraries' relationship with their patrons and the citizens, I think this list could be extremely long. These are top level ones that are picked up right now. Um, we have a new European Commission since 2019, a new parliament, and they're very, very clear top level priorities um, that are in play right now. And we wanted to do a forward looking document as well. So, you know, what is the potential coming forward? And these are the four. Um, so you may know the European Parliament have voted a massive extra budget um, to be distributed at member state level for pandemic recovery. And there's many opportunities within that. Um, is already on the agenda to build up a digital skills. And that means everything from basic digital skills to telecoms infrastructure, to appropriate legislation around privacy. Um, GDPR is a good example of that. There's a big agenda there. Um, the question about European democracy, I think, has become even more highlighted since, um, since uh, the American elections. There's significant issues that are happening in many European countries. Um, somehow it's easy to look at how this feels now post pandemic. Of course, these priorities were set before the pandemic. Pandemic has kind of sharpened the edge of this quite a lot. And then the question of climate change, which is great to see that the commission is really pushing forward a whole bunch of issues around here. So what these priorities mean is that this gives the commission permission and strategic direction to develop a whole range of programs and policies and funding mechanisms that will support uh, outcomes in these areas. And that's where the opportunities will lie. Um, so in the report, we are looking at all of the programs that are listed below. Um, I've not, I want to be careful about talking on jargon. And, you know, when you read this report, there is a certain amount of assumption that there's an understanding about he, how EU policy programs work and how EU institutions work at a very, very top level. Um, so you'll have programs which will drill down into specific actions and to specific calls and tenders at different times. Gary, you mentioned the Conference on the Future of Europe. That's been massively um, affected by the pandemic, of course. And you know, very early on, um, as part of the work we're doing on democracy, we started to talk about whether public libraries could be part of this, um, not just having big fancy citizen agora with thousands of people or, but you know, stuff that's locally embedded and locally driven. And we still think there's opportunities for public libraries to build into that. Um, I'm just gonna jump. So just to say, this is a very nuts and bolts report. You can go through it. You can see all of the key areas that we've picked out where you can find um, examples of EU policy. This is not a funding guide or a guide to open calls or places that you can apply for money. It's an assessment, a strategic assessment of where the EU is supporting or not. Um, so um, just to perhaps pull out some of the big um, areas, you know, there's uh, plenty of scope for libraries, um, whether it's directly mentioned or not. Uh, a lot of the advocacy we did was focusing on, for example, non-formal and informal education, which happens a great deal in libraries. There's an increasing number of opportunities in that area. Um, we're seeing a lot of moves from European Parliament to push for more support on the lifelong learning and non-formal area. Education suffers from the same problem in that it's not a direct competence. Um, little by little, the European Union has been pushing into deeper areas of um, education, you know, starting with higher education, convergence and alignment, you know, we're really seeing some possibilities now for ways of validating and assessing and supporting the non-formal informal education, which particularly as online education has become so important, MOOCs, there are many, many, many different pathways to education or to skills recognition in the employment area. And um, I think there's a great deal of potential there. It is tricky to patch. We want to look at the conference on the future of Europe, um, as I mentioned. The structural funds, which, you know, in general are 
30% of the total EU budget uh, is broken down into a number of category areas, but a huge amount of money um, put towards training and capacity building areas. Um, so far been very, very difficult for public libraries to access. And the Commission recognised that the access to these funds is extremely challenging for any new entrants. And that's something that we can work on. And then talking about citizen engagement, um, which um, for the first time in my memory, we have a commissioner whose portfolio title includes the title uh, Commissioner for Deliberative Democracy. Um, so there's a real opportunity here to expand the ways in which uh, citizens are engaging with policymaking, engaging with EU issues. Um, the Commission itself has embarked on an extensive long-term process to, I want to call it something like, um, don't be afraid to ask people what they think. Figuring out more intelligent, more deep ways of asking citizens uh, what they think and what they need, um, moving away from reliance on online consultations, for example, and trying to change the culture within the Commission of how that works. So I think that's really, really exciting. Um, so that's just a really quick one through of what you see in the report. It's not super long, it's accessible, there's a good executive summary, and we're going to be working with all of the Urban Agenda partners to look at de disseminating this and also exploring how we can use this as an advocacy tool and take on some of the momentum that's been um, generated by this. And I think even the fact of Berlin putting this on the urban agenda, certainly from our side, we're getting a lot more interest, requests and thoughts at a municipal and city level. And I think this is an untapped area um, for us from an advocacy point of view and from a connected advocacy point of view. So I think it's super exciting and um, I'm looking forward to hearing the rest of the discussion. Thank you for your attention. I hope I was not speaking too fast. Thank you very much, Ilona. This was, uh, of course, a very uh, um, short, uh, but I think you gave a great uh, insight into what you were investigating. And I, I also think that uh, a basis like this is very important uh, to us uh, to continue and to start mm. our uh, discussions and our yes. arguments uh, with, uh, with uh, our politicians. So this is uh, very important to us. Thank you very much. Um, so, um, I ask uh, all of you uh, uh, attendees to please use the chat uh, for your questions, your remarks. Um, and uh, perhaps there is already um, a came a question up to Gary Whoop or Ton van Flimmeren or now to the um, survey um, and the um, presentation Ilona just showed. So Daniel, can I ask you, is there anything in the chat already that we should uh, mention at the moment? Yeah, I briefly looked through the chat. So there was a question by uh, Sander van Kempen uh, directed to Ilona um, in the list of societal challenges. Uh, you, Ilona, have presented um, uh, she's missing literacy. Is there a reason why this is missing? That's a question directed to you. Um, so probably you can you can answer it briefly. Um, yeah, so that's an interesting question. Um, uh, you say in the societal challenges. Yeah. Um, yeah, because um, it's just not on the EU agenda. <laughs> You know, um, my my the the project that we were running was hosted by the Stichting Lezen and the the Reading and Writing Foundation in the Netherlands, and um, was on the back of a very very big report in 2013 on the status of literacy across Europe, which showed that um, one in ten Europeans have little or no basic literacy. And there's a there's a UNESCO scale. Huh? And I think it proved very, very difficult to capitalize on that. And the Commission is not very keen to engage in the, on the basic skills agenda in general. Um, and often we would make the point that if you need a digital citizenship program, you also need to have a basic literacy program because it's very difficult 
to be digi digitally literate if you're not uh, literate in a reading and writing forum. So it's uh, it's not on the EU agenda. There are no EU programs for it, um, even though it's core business for public libraries. So our our list was based on what the EU was addressing. So it's true, obviously, it's a societal challenge, as is many, many other things. But politically, it's not not on the radar at European level. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sadly. Any remarks uh, out of the chat, Daniel? Daniel, also from the Berlin Senate. Uh, yeah, on there's this. another question uh, directed to Tom. Probably could be also part of the, the upcoming discussion. Um, by uh, The question is by Arjun Sanyal. Um, to Ton, the very idea of public libraries has been one of the cornerstones of the democratic edifice. It, in, it's a rather important issue. How do you, public libraries, how do you think public libraries can reinforce democracies in this area of post truth uh, with misinformation by competing the, so uh, he's, he's writing canker, I'm, I'm not sure if it's, if it's cancer of, of fake news. So how can, libraries combat uh, fake news and misinformation that's basically his question uh, probably you ton can answer to it or it can also be part of the further discussion um, up to you yes this is a, a, a very uh, important uh, question of course and um, yes ton perhaps uh, briefly and this is kind of a um, uh, we we start uh, slowly into the the discussion which will uh, follow right uh, right after your answering. Okay. Well, uh, a, a brief answer is that indeed that is a very important topic because uh, misinformation um, is uh, threatening uh, democracy in a very severe way. And um, for example, Nina Sheik in her uh, uh, book, um, she speaks about uh, the infocalypse, which uh, is, is very disturbing um, uh, on what is happening to information. And as I said earlier, the informed citizen is uh, the basis for the democratic society. So there is a big uh, uh, task for public libraries to work on that. And there are opportunities as well. But I guess we will come to that later in the discussion. Thank you. That's right. So thank you very much. And Ilona, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. You will stay with us on the panel, which will follow right now. Uh, perhaps, uh, Sophie or Daniel, could you um, put the link uh, f uh, of the study of the uh, s uh, report uh, into the chat for everybody to follow then afterwards as well? Okay, so now we will uh, discuss a little further and um, two of our uh, panelists uh, you know already, which is Ton van Flimmeren, the um, EBLIDA uh, president, and Ilona Kisch. And I also welcome now Laura Colini and Volker Heller. So, Volker, are you there? Yes, here he is. Okay. Uh, Laura. Laura Kulidi is a senior researcher on EU urban policies and urban inequalities. She currently works as senior policy expert on social and urban policies for the EU Commission, also for the EU urban agenda. Uh, welcome, Laura. And I will introduce Volker right away. Also, Volker Heller is the Director General of the Berlin Central and Regional Library. He has worked in different cities in Germany in the field of management in the cultural sector. And he also worked as a musician and composer. So Volker knows both sides, um, the uh, cultural one as an artist and libraries, and the political side as a manager in different cities. So these are our panelists. A warm welcome to all of you. Our topic is public libraries on the European agenda. And you see the, um, the, hmm, what is the, you know, what is the, the sign behind it? The, hmm, the, das Ausrufezeichen. Was heißt das auf Englisch? 
um, the remark. I don't know. So it is not a question mark, but uh, we want, this is our, um, what we want, we want public libraries on the European agenda. And um, so we, we start uh, with Laura. How do you see the importance of the urban agenda for the EU in terms of urban policies at the European level? And where do you see public libraries in this context? So good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thank you for inviting me to this uh, meeting. Um, I'm a colleague of uh, Daniel Deppe for the EU Urban Agenda Partnership, but I'm also very glad because I am somehow a Berliner for 16 years and I've been enjoying the access of libraries in Berlin. And I think that they are um, a great example also for many other cities in Europe. Um, and thank you also for introducing me, but I want to say that I don't work directly for the European Commission, but I work for programs of the European Commission. Uh, and I'm an urbanist, so one is urban and the other one is urban innovative action. So my perspective is very much uh, uh, on uh, cities um, at European level. And what concerns the EU urban agenda, I have to say a couple of words. Uh, what is the EU urban agenda? Because not um, everyone might be familiar with it. It's an initiative that started in 2016. And it is absolutely innovative for the kind of work of the European Commission because it brings together um, international organization, but also cities, um, uh, state level, and the commission, and when I say the commission, I say different DGs, director general, they usually don't work together. So the DGs for urban policy, the DGs for social policies, and so on for all the others. So it's an, an important, absolutely important occasion of creating, um, of creating new ideas, but also creating new demands that are not necessarily um, taken on board in a, such a holistic way, um, bringing together all these different actors. Um, the frame of the urban agenda is as follows. We have uh, three main pillars on better knowledge, better regulation and better funding. So these partnerships can propose something new in this direction. Um, and so we have actions that are addressing one or two of these pillars. There is no obligation in the sen in the participating in it, so it's voluntary basis. And there is no obligation from the side of the Commission to take them on board, but it is an occasion. So to have the um, action that is put forward by the Senate of Berlin on public libraries, and together with cities administration is of great importance because it's stressing a lot what we have been saying so far, that there is a need to look at this aspect beyond the um, official mandate of the European Commission. What uh, Ilona Kish was saying before, uh, when we talk about libraries, as for many other social policies, they are not in the mandate of the European Commission, are uh, part of the sovereignty of the member states, like for instance, for housing or other you know, um, welfare policies, for instance. But the European Commission can and is actually influencing a lot in the way funding is uh, designed, in the way um, 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 country-specific recommendations are also designed um, in terms of focusing uh, funding on specific topics. And so to have this action uh, in there is more than welcome because uh, it needs the necessary visibility. And last but not least, I would say that uh, programs are like Urbacht, I'm not representing Urbacht here at the moment, but I do work as a program uh, um, advisor for Urbacht, um, uh, has a great possibility to involve uh, cities to exchange on practices around recreating libraries as a social hubs. I stop here and, um, and I give the floor back to you. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much, Laura, for this uh, input also on the the um, EU uh, agenda as a whole. This is uh, urban agenda as a whole. This is important. And um, so uh, your last sentence was the connection to the libraries. So you you see the libraries as what you said, uh, social houses within the 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 cities. And um, perhaps you can um, stress a little more about uh, how, 
what would you recommend us as librarians to to push further to become more visible in this context? Well, um, okay, so I have many hats, so I, I, I can bring them together in a, in a different setting. I mean, if I take the set, the hat of the Urbach um, um, uh, program, um, so we have, for instance, a transfer network uh, um, activities. So ACD, that is, has developed a good practice in uh, one topic, can create a network um, and transfer this practice. It's always not only a learning from one to many, but also the city that is transferring the practice has the opportunity to learn something new. And other cities to adapt the practice that is uh, presented as a quote, quote, good one. Um, so um, in relation to culture, for instance, we had a network on um, um, education, arts and performing arts uh, in schooling. It's called uh, On Stage. And uh, also the work to a certain extent with libraries. We had another transfer network on NGO houses, like creating of new social hubs for local association. Also, we see the role of libraries in uh, in something in this kind of uh, high density social hubs. Um, we had, for instance, in another program, uh, uh, that's the other hat of the program of the UIA, we had a program on guaranteed minimum income uh, in uh, the private urban areas, but all the meetings of um, the supposed beneficiaries of the guaranteed minimum income happened in social center that was in Barcelona. And in the social center, there were libraries. So libraries were a place also to provide information on how to access this innovative program on guaranteed minimum income. So um, the idea is to multiply as much as possible the capacity of rethinking uh, libraries as a, a place for innovation or a place that becomes um, it becomes a house or a place where you want to go. It's not a place for um, only for selected people that are used to living uh, with books. I want to. Can I? Can I tell you some uh, a funny episode, uh, if I may, or the personal? I was uh, um, lucky enough to be at MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where there is a great library there, and the library we were going as a student was open to anyone. So we had uh, homeless people that would access the library regular together with students of the MIT. And also I, w I had a dog at that time. So I went with a dog and the librarian said to me, thank you for bringing the dog. And I was like, what? I should not bring it. And she said, no, it's such a great pleasure to have people just taking, it obviously has to be silent, right? But uh, to take in a uh, to make the library a familiar place for everyone. And so there were sofas and place where you could actually relax and access book and meet other people. So it was a, quite a different ways of, uh, in, of imagining libraries as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for sharing your your story. And I think, Volker, you can uh, add many, many other uh, stories as uh, the director of the Berlin Central and Regional Library. So there are examples of, uh, of uh, um, people coming together in, in your library uh, every day. So how do you do you see the um, the, the the library out of the perspective or from a from a big city from a big library in a Berlin on uh, on the European perspective what you know what where where can you get um, um, uh, impact out of uh, of the European idea and all the possibilities from there. Yeah, thank you for the question, um, which is uh, um, uh, quite um, difficult to answer because um, if, if you ask me for a European impact, there is so much about Europe, like uh, we are sharing values, we are sharing a mostly liberal democratic system in most of uh, the uh, uh, the European member states. Um, we are sharing um, kind of um, policies um, like uh, um, the sustainable uh, development goals or other um, political goals 
Um, so there's a, a lot of impacts and uh, um, some of well, some of them we, we work in a very direct way when we uh, share programs, uh, EU programs, when we join them as, a, uh, as partners um, or when we uh, join um, partnerships with other European uh, library, uh, libraries and um, um, partners like, for example, the uh, uh, EU um, Cultural Foundation um, with the program, for example, um, uh, how libraries can um, support uh, the uh, uh, European democracy um, in uh, as as contact points as uh, multipliers for this democratic idea, as hubs for uh, democracy. Um, so there are a lot of um, aspects and and and, and uh, uh, impacts we can answer with the uh, uh, infrastructure as libraries, but at the same time. Um, I think that um, the way we work, and we work in our cities as li libraries, we work in a multifunctional way. There are several tasks we are working on, like literacy, digital literacy, democratic literacy. We are fighting prejudice, uh, prejudice and fake news and conspiracy narratives. We work as third places. We are hubs for social encounter and participation in the cities. So. This is a multifunctional house, a trusted community resource. And at the same moment, this um, cross-sectional function is our problem uh, in our narrative. Um, I think we have to search for a new narrative for the libraries. Um, uh, how we can tell what the significant significance and the relevance of our institution, of our infrastructure, is what potential uh, we have um, in this cross-sectional function to um, um, administrational organizations like the EU Commission, uh, which has built up in uh, 26 commissions. Uh, and we can't uh, really define where we should be assigned to as libraries. If we were hospitals, this would be really simple. You know, the, the commission we were assigned to is the uh, Commission for Health. So as, library, as, as libraries, there are a lot of commissions and a lot of tasks we uh, may uh, uh, contribute to. Um, and as uh, contact points with a huge range and the population, as uh, Gary Whoop said in the beginning, um, there's a, a big, a huge potential to, um, to act as kind of a super spreaders for all those uh, EU topics and, uh, and issues. Um, to bring them in a, in a conversation with the uh, EU population. But this, again, is not a function which may be assigned to one commission, like this is the Commission for uh, Social Development or the, another one for ecological problems and so on. But on every of these topics, we may be uh, a multiplier for the EU. And I don't have the answer how we can um, bring in an awareness uh, in this political system to this specific function of libraries. But I think this would be very important. This is really interesting. Thank you. Uh, because uh, normally I would say that public libraries are always very proud of um, uh, answering to so many uh, um, uh, 
problems um, within society. And when Laura just told about all these different uh, projects, I, I always was thinking, oh, yes, this is something for libraries and this and this and this and that. And uh, we, at least in Germany, we, for many years, they connected us uh, automatically to the cultural sector. Uh, and we, we worked very hard to get away from there and to say we are an educational institution. So uh, I understand very well what uh, what um, you you um, your idea is of having these two sides. Uh, one is of course very positive if we have so many possibilities. On the other hand, what is our identity, so to speak? And uh, perhaps we can turn this question to Ton or for the European level in in public libraries or also your. Um, your experience from your library in the Netherlands. Uh, what what uh, is your reaction to this discussion? You have to mute your, your mic. Unmute your mic. So, sorry for that. Thank you for the question. And like Volker already said, it's a difficult question. Um, I would say there are some some answers possible. Um, one is that last week I was in a in a workshop with uh, all kind of researchers on libraries, and they raised the question: Are we asking too much from libraries? Are libraries involved in too many things? Um, and that raises the question of choosing, because if you want to create identity, you need to make a choice where you focus on and that is something that uh, for a passionate librarian is very difficult uh, libraries are not good in excluding things and saying we don't do this anymore there are little examples in in as far as i know um, for example pat lesinski in in uh, columbus ohio who said, we don't do maker spaces and we don't do this and we don't do cultural events. We only focus on enhancing the reading uh, quality uh, of the children that have to go to school. But that's one of the, of the few I, I know uh, making this choice. On the other hand, uh, maybe our unique thing is in this, um, um, uh, in, in, in the fact that we, can connect all these uh, um, uh, split uh, uh, approaches. It reminds me of, of the projects that were done by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and they worked also in silos. So they had their economical programs in countries and their agricultural programs and their library programs. And one day they found out that the effect of the agricultural program and to create new small businesses, etc., was much better when it was performed through the library. So the library as a kind of aggregator where you can bring things together. And um, I, would, I would like to argue that um, if we take the concept of an inclusive democratic society, it can't be with, uh, without equal opportunities uh, on it can't be without lifelong learning it, it can't be without no discrimination so there is a lot about this uh, uh, what is in in the uh, and of course digital citizenship is very important with all what is happening on that uh, field so i would say that this is this is where everything comes together and uh, the library is the place where you can connect uh, these things and and uh, work on it. So that could also maybe to avoid these difficult choices uh, and excluding things uh, be an opportunity to present the library as the place where this all comes together with more results. And of course, we have to prove that. So it's important also to work on uh, indicators uh, of the impact of our work and that is also, for example, something uh, Eblida is doing with a expert group uh, to uh, uh, identify indicators that libraries can help to prove the result of their work in this. 
because that's also in the advocacy something we need uh, arguments and data. So could that mean that uh, libraries should uh, define themselves not as much as doing things themselves, like we have today, we do the um, um, working space and, uh, and projects and so on and so on, but rather be take uh, over the function of enabler, which we also, you know, it's in the discussion that libraries just give the platform, library staff is there to manage to support but not to do him or it uh, herself is that a question to me um, um yes yes i can ask the others as well probably there okay. will be different opinions um well i think librarians have an expertise and that is uh, something that uh, we should not forget that professionals uh, uh, are different from, for example, volunteers and, and volunteer-run libraries. So when it comes to providing access to information or uh, uh, supporting people with uh, courses in, in digital citizenship or literacy courses, there you need some professionality and you need to bring that in because, um, well, of course, volunteers can do a lot and citizens can do a lot in these things, but there has to be also, uh, well, uh, good quality in, in that. At the same time, engaging with partners and engaging with citizens to uh, decide what is on the agenda and also to be involved in a way uh, that if citizens are uh, engaged in a process of co-creation, that is empowering in itself already also. So that is that is important as well. So I think you need both um, be aware of what is the unique thing that libraries can bring in and at the same time um, be servant to the community in bringing that in to what is the need in the community. Ilona, do you agree to Ton's response? <laughs> I always agree with Tom <laughs> in public. <laughs> um, what, what, what would you like me to develop on the most? What's most interesting for you? Well, perhaps then we can can shift to a, a topic which was mentioned already several times during our um, um, session today. It's sustainability. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, I think this is really a topic which uh, now arrived in many, many uh, libraries within uh, mm -hmm. the European um, countries. And mm -hmm. um, there is also a strong focus point of uh, uh, um, sustainable matters and this topic within the EU. And you also mm -hmm. have uh, pointed out in your survey the, um, the um, uh, on EU level, the uh, green uh, how is it the um the green the, deal the green deal right mm -hmm. so where do you see um mm -hmm. the possibility for libraries there to to um become more visible it's always a question of um of uh, visibility to uh, to make politicians understand what we can offer to them mm -hmm. to their uh, votes and to our citizens Mm -hmm. I don't know, there's a lot of very big questions, you know. I mean, I think, you know, as an English native speaker, I mean, the word sustainability is used in lots of misleading ways. Or, you know, what, what, what does it mean? Do we mean environmental sustainability? You know, that we can get, we can kind of get caught up in, in you know, it, I had an interesting experience a while ago and I was approached by um, a think group from the British Library actually who wanted to organise a series of webinars about libraries and climate change and I said why are you doing it now and they said well you know seems like it's an important topic and I'm like yeah but it was five years ago and it will be in ten years ago so 
it's not it's not like a kind of zeitgeist topic that you just pick up on you know I think I think what I was thinking about when um Ton was speaking um you know it's a great strength as you said Hella that public libraries touch so many different aspects of society and what we need is the leadership capacity in libraries to make strategic choices and the strategic choices should be driven by first by what the citizens needs not by what will impress the politicians that's the most important thing you know it if the eu was climate change is super important it's always been super important um it's great that there's energy for it now we can capitalize on it there may not be in five years time you know but it has to be a strategic choice and it has to be a value driven choice and i think that um we love to play around with this idea within our within our community of libraries are neutral not neutral you know libraries are are, are politically neutral spaces but we are not values neutral and I believe that if a library or a library community wants to adhere to a certain group of values around building a sustainable economy, building a sustainable ecology, those things, because also what we're talking about is the sustainability of libraries themselves. How will they exist into the 21st century? And the only answer for that is relevance and meaning to the local community. If the library is meaningful and relevant for the local community, then it will live and grow. And whether that's by running programs on climate change or on education, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that the library stands for something and that it stands for something positive for society and that it stands for the community that it represents and that it seeks to represent the whole community in its diversity and in an inclusive manner. So, um, and but for that, you need capable leadership that is able to make choices because every organization has to make choices. Well, nobody yeah. can do everything. And no, no, especially underfunded public organizations are going to solve the world's problems. <laughs> it's, yeah. Nobody thinks that, you know, but if the public library space can develop the confidence and I think this is a theme that we had a meeting in Amsterdam with Volker a few years ago and we we're talking with the Amsterdam Public Library as well this this shift from offering something to inviting in to giving the space over to the others you know it, how that you know of course as Tom says you know it's a mixture and a balance but there's this big mindset difference you know I know we're all you know we all love the it is a palaces of the people idea you know that if these spaces can be owned by the people, then, um, then uh, you know, the questions of sustainability or topic or theme or choices become much easier, much easier to deal with if, if this mindset is of openness and engagement and inclusion. You know, and then, you know, of course, the nitty gritty is where do we get the money from that? How do we do that? And that's why we need, you know, wonderful examples like Volker and Ton and, you know, there's so many remarkable librarians and library stories out there and um you know our network it bleeder we're all trying to make them visible in all many many ways so encouraging participation in networks encouraging i would love to see i don't know if um mr whoop is still here but i would love to see the netherlands has done a lot of this sending librarians to visit other libraries to meet other librarians to see what's happening to bring people into the libraries to learn from each other you know we we're not as well connected across Europe as we could be. There's not enough personal networks. There's not enough forums. And I would yeah. see that as a first step to supporting that. Yeah, thank you. So connecting the networking, we had this uh, quite a few times Super mentioned important. the importance of networking yeah. on all levels as well. Yeah. Uh, we want to uh, at least get one or two questions from the audience. But before we do this, uh, Volker, I think you you will agree with uh, what Ilona said, but perhaps just to also mention another topic is our library staff. So you are doing a lot in, in your library also to, you know, to, to engage uh, the citizens. Um, uh, how about um, the library staff? I mean, they also have to um, 
yeah, identify themselves with their work. So are there are these librarians, um, the traditional librarians, there are those, the, the managers. Um, how do we get not only our audience involved in what we are doing, but also get our staff with us when we say um, we have to define our libraries perhaps in a new way or in a different way? Yeah, that's a, um, a huge challenge. Um, um, well, on the on the one hand, uh, there doesn't exist the librarian. We've got uh, very different uh, librarians uh, um, at the uh, ZLB. Um, there are some uh, really traditional um, librarians in a way uh, that they define a, a library as a institution of uh, a cultural heritage. And you have to save all the material we have in, all the, all the books. And um, um, this is a very traditional way. And it's important because somehow we deal with cultural heritage. And at the same moment, uh, um, we are um, the most frequently visited place, a cultural place in our city. So we have to handle a lot of uh, communication with our visitors and with uh, um, all their needs, uh, things they want to do in our library. And in the other extreme, we have the librarians who say, okay, this is your house. I give you the key. You can decide what you want to do here. You can decide me what i have to do for you and what service uh, uh, you want to have so this is the range <laughs> and yeah. um, um we have to work uh, um in the uh, education of librarians in many ways uh on uh, uh, all these uh, challenges like um, um we start more and more to uh, invite um, people who haven't studied librarianship uh, to work in our library, like um, um, community managers, social workers, um, uh, media educators, and so on. And uh, um, I think it's as I said our library is a multifunctional place. We need all those com multifunctional competences in our staff. And as uh, library managers, it's uh, uh, our challenge to organize a diverse and in, in the com uh, diverse in competences, a diverse library staff. Yes, I, so we see another big topic. Uh, thank you very much for this little, uh, just, just, just uh, starting a huge discussion, uh, but uh, uh, time is running and uh, I think we have to, uh, to close our discussion. But uh, before we do this, we ask Daniel if there are perhaps one question from the audience. But as I said, uh, your questions, if there are more in the chat, uh, they will be answered afterwards. So don't worry that your question will not be answered, even if it is not posed here. But perhaps, Daniel, is there one question perhaps with a new aspect or something which comes from the audience? I think it's more more common, but I want to just throw it in the, in the panel discussion. So it's a comment by Elisabeth Rundquist. Uh, she's writing, it is of course satisfying to hear the speakers talking about democracy and give all people equity and equal opportunities. But what I can see is that groups are increasingly left out. Migrants, asylum seekers, EU migrants, uh, national minorities or regional ethnic group, people with disabilities, elderly people, etc. are put against each other instead of make sure all groups will be worked out will be worked with some groups are left out of out from the equation nice words but only for specific priority sized groups not the people that needs it the, it the most so um 
this could be if someone wants to react to this comment but but i think because i think it's it's uh, quite quite provocative for discussion as well so um Yes, thank yeah. you, Daniel. Thank you, Elspeth and uh, Ton. If there is a short uh, answer, remark, go ahead. Well, there is no short answer to a question like this because it's really true. And um, what we have seen in many Western countries is that uh, neoliberal politics in the last 20 years excluded a lot of people from Uh, for example, the, the affordable housing market or access to education or, um, well, laborers uh, pay taxes and wealthy people don't pay taxes. So th this is really something that is happening in society. It's happening in the Netherlands, but it's also happening in Sweden and in many other countries. And of course, libraries cannot compensate for what is happening there. But it, it raises um, uh, a question that all these people who are excluded uh, now seem to a large extent to move towards, um, well, populist parties, uh, um, um, uh, go into information bubbles where they get uh, confirmation of their ideas being uh, with true information or not. And that creates a challenge for the library to create a more common ground for uh, communicating in society. Uh, and uh, for example, in the United States, where there is a similar very big problem because 70 million voters uh, voted really opposite 70 million other voters, um, the Library Association brings out uh, a course how to organize community talks and how to bring people from different backgrounds together and to create again some cohesion in a society that has been driven apart. So I completely agree with that and I won't say it's easy, but because of the limitations of the time you give, uh, I leave it to this. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, there are many topics we which we would love to continue discussing and many uh, very important topics, but uh, we cannot uh, do it now. Um, but um, we will raise the question. So this is what we talked about today. So where do we go from here? And uh, I will raise this question to Rainer schmock -Barte. But before I do this, I want to thank the panelists uh, very much for participating in this discussion. And um, let's see uh, how we can continue our discussion and our exchange. So, Rainer, um, you are the head of the unit Urban Culture at Berlin Senate Department for Culture and Europe. And uh, I uh, yeah, ask you, so how shall we move on from now? Yes, thank you, Hella. And um, I think that's uh, the part of my task now um, to say uh, thank you, first of all, to you, Hella, for your moderation uh, of this event and uh, also your efforts uh, concerning the organization um, of this uh, today, uh, side by side with the colleagues of IBLIDA. Uh, it was a pleasure to work with you. And um, I have to admit, most of the time, it was a pleasure of Daniel, uh, who has uh, most part of the workload. Uh, and I'm looking uh, optimistic to our uh, following uh, event in, in November. Um, next, I would also like to thank our panelists uh, for discussing uh, those topical questions about library with us today. And uh, this... Um, Uh, would not uh, been possible uh, without the help of Ilona uh, and her team from Public Libraries 2030. Uh, they prepared the report for us and uh, with all the results. And I think this will help us to um, progress in the next months um, of our action in the framework of the uh, um, Urban Agenda. Last but not least, um, I thank um, also to the coordinators of our um, action uh, and of the Urban Agenda Partnership, um, 
the German Ministry of uh, the Interior and the Italian Ministry of uh, Cultural Heritage and Tourism. Um, their work is supporting us and um, give us the great opportunity to discuss um, those things here in this framework with you uh, from Eblida and also participants um, here. Um, you're doing a great job and thank you. But after this, concerning our subject um, um, of our meeting, I think, um, that was a report of uh, Public Libraries 2030, and this uh, was also shown, I think, in the discussion, um, where we um, only can um, tip some of the urgent questions um, which uh, need to be discussed. Um, we now um, have an important document um, that makes it even easier for us to emphasize the importance and the role of public libraries in, in Europe to decision makers on all levels. I think. Um, as you mentioned, uh, Ilona, in, in the report, um, 65,000 institutions, uh, nearly every European city are attractive partners for policy implementation on all levels. So um, we should work um, for that they are not um, ignored or better can better participate. In Berlin, I think we have already been supporting public libraries um, with the help of Europe. Uh, Public Libraries in the District is the name of our program uh, for several years, uh, funding uh, funded by the ERDF. Um, this funding allows public libraries to renew and to advance innovations in the facilities as well. Um, in particular, we support libraries um, to act as um, low threshold institutions to the entire urban society, as we discussed um, some minutes ago. Um, to um, let nobody uh, behind. So um, looking on these experiences it would be great if our action on the urban agenda um, on one hand made the potential of public libraries for European cities as well as European policymakers um, uh, more and more visible. And on the other hand, um, encourages public libraries to reach out for European funding um, to modernize, to expand and to innovate their services, um, we will definitely definite, definitely, uh, try to promote the topic in the coming months. As you know, we are looking forward um, to other activities planned for the implementation of our action. Particularly exciting, I think, um, will be the cooperation with the Institute for Library and Information Science at Humboldt University in Berlin. Um, some students will help us uh, to work on some policy studies concerning the question are public libraries on the agenda of European policies for lifelong learning, for example, or entrepreneurship um, and vice versa. How can public libraries contribute uh, to those European and national policies? Um, perhaps, you know, we identified um, interesting policy areas for that work uh, with a short questionnaire um, via Eblida um, earlier in the year. So uh, we were optimistic to um, produce some interesting results in the end with the help of our students. Then we are looking to um, some further events. Um, the next is um, we will discuss uh, our um, action at the next library festival uh, next week on June 3rd. Um, if time here was a bit tight today, I think um, this would be an opportunity uh, for some of you to deepen the discussion. And in late summer, <clears throat> um, we will have another core activity of our action. We plan to launch um, a Europe-wide survey uh, on the question of how libraries deal with the need um, for change in order to respond to um, such um, fundamental developments of our time, like uh, demographic change, uh, diversity, increasing diversity in our cities, digitality, um, and so on. Uh, we would like to know where public libraries need help and what kind. Um, so I think this will produce uh, additional uh, interesting uh, facts or impressions. Um, and to finish, uh, we will have another um, webinar here uh, with you from Iblida and uh, in November once again uh, to present um, the results of the mentioned actions and um, I think then uh, this will also mark the end of the whole action because the partnership will come to an end um, by the end of the year. 
if nothing changes. And um, until then, I think we are very happy to keep you posted. So thank you. That's our way uh, in the rest of the year. Thank you very much, Rainer. There are many uh, new plans to continue our exchange and our discussion, which is very good. And uh, as you said, we will continue uh, uh, latest in November. Uh, so I also can uh, can say thank you all very much uh, for participating today. For uh, Thank you to the panelists, uh, to Eblida especially for, for the technical support, to the team, Rainer, Daniel, and uh, of course a big thank to the whole uh, audience uh, who have devoted their time and interest in these uh, in interesting and important uh, topics uh, of today. So, as you said, Rainer, there are, and Ilona, uh, in her study, there are uh, 65,000 um, public libraries uh, with all their uh, millions of, um, of library users waiting for us to continue our developments and we will go for it. So thanks again to everybody and uh, take care and see you next time in November. Thank you very much. Goodbye.